Angus Coot and I'm a co-founder of Jamison Coot Bonds. I'm Charlie Jamison, uh, I'm the CIO at Jamison Coot Bonds, uh, founded in 2014 uh, and we are an active Australian government bond fund that specialises in duration management and security selection. The solution that Jamison Coot Bonds provides is uh, it's a defensive allocation inside portfolios. Uh, it's an actively managed fund which delivers strong diversification benefits uh, against other risk holdings inside a portfolio to help uh, complement them. It's a wonderful protector against uh, market stress or any kind of deflation shock, uh, providing a stable source of income backed by governments. And it's a wonderful source of defensive liquidity inside a portfolio. We have a lot of investors that come to us and say they are very well diversified and when we look at what they actually hold we find that they have a lot of correlation in, in, in many of the things that they own, be that term deposits uh, or corporate bond exposures, credit exposures that have tended to be very financial uh, in nature. They may own uh, bank hybrid securities or have negatively geared uh, investment property which is susceptible to a lot of bank funding risk and, and credit risk or they may even own uh, you know, bank equity as well. And that's a, a, a pretty tight, uh, kind of correlated kind of stack of assets. Clearly, you know, some of them are much higher quality, lower returning, and some of them are lower in quality, but offer higher returns. But we believe that in order to get that true uncorrelated uh, type of exposure, we need to find a slightly different risk allocation altogether, which is why government-only risk makes sense in, in this scenario. Offshore you see a very large allocation in, in terms of fixed income in people's portfolio, uh, portfolios. In Australia that hasn't been the case um, up until most recently because there hasn't been a, a bond market of, of note for people to invest in. Uh, but since the GFC uh, that has changed. Prior to 2007 the Australian Commonwealth Government bond market was only about $45 billion in size which is on a relative basis is actually pretty small. Since that we've had a tenfold increase in Commonwealth Government debt and then on top of that we have nearly a trillion dollar market to, to invest in yet there has been no response from people's portfolios in investing in this asset class. In terms of how much people, allocation people should have, I would argue that uh, at, at the moment zero is, is not the correct allocation. Offshore you see, you see uh, where you have more developed and, and longer term markets, you have uh, an allocation of up, up, up to 20%. In Australia we found that on our journey thus far that the people don't have any in their, in their, in their portfolios, which we believe is, is not, not best practice. The well, critical themes for investors today, uh, you know, clearly um, we're in an in incredible uh, period post the GFC, had huge amounts of central bank intervention in markets that have distorted many asset prices. Uh, we worry that uh, maybe investors haven't got enough or haven't got their risk allocations correct and they've been too focused on return. Uh, I think, uh, you know, the macro environment is certainly challenging. We've seen uh, increased bouts of volatility in asset portfolio performance. And so Jamison Coop Bonds exists to try and provide uh, some kind of smoothing function to provide that negative correlation. You know, clearly, uh, you know, the markets these days uh, are operating under tremendous amounts of newly created debt, which is providing some kind of growth drag on, uh, on the recovery. It has been the weakest recovery we've seen since uh, a recessionary period. Uh, and I guess, uh, you know, for investor portfolios, we need to make sure that they are balancing those risks against uh, their return estimations to make sure that you know, they're going to be ready for all scenarios that, uh, that will transpire in the future. Government bonds play uh, a number of roles in portfolios and they, they do this for you know, the most sophisticated investors in the world, be it sovereign wealth funds, central banks, endowment and pension funds, uh, or you know, asset management firms. And primarily they are a wonderful source of storage uh, of wealth that provides income over time. Uh, in, interestingly, you know, in, in uh, global markets, in, in Europe and the US for, for instance, uh, they play a cornerstone role in portfolio construction and they have very heavy allocations, albeit despite yields being quite low in those marketplaces. But the reason that those allocations have persisted is they have an enduring role to play, providing liquidity, providing wonderful uh, protection against downturns, and they're also seen as a, a store of ammunition in many sense that can take advantage of uh, repricings in other riskier markets and clearly being very liquid and, and generally performing very well in times of stress, it's a great product to potentially come out of if you're looking to take advantage of uh, you know, achieving
deepening of high quality assets in other parts of your portfolio. And that's something that investors haven't had enough exposure to in Australia. They've tended to use products that have been more up the risk curve and therefore in those times of stress those products haven't performed as well or been liquid and easy to get through the market when maybe people have wanted to move on to buy their favourite company at a discount from where they believe it might, uh, it might actually trade in time. So we think they've got an enduring role to play. Uh, and you know clearly the, the, the amount of market growth that we've experienced is as a result of our deficit since the GFC and the much improved access points in the market are making this a you know, truly wonderful allocation uh, as a defensive allocation inside portfolios. A rate rising environment is uh, clearly a challenge for government bonds in some respects but in an enduring allocation to a portfolio rising rate environment is actually a great thing because it means that when coupon payments are made or i.e. interest payments on government bonds and inside a portfolio context when bonds mature and are reinvested both of those cash flows are reinvested into higher rates Now that becomes very virtuous over time and clearly if we think about you know government bonds and interest rates have generally fallen for the last 30 years if we were to think through a mirror image of a rising rate environment for the next 30 years, ordinarily you think that would create a huge drag or a headwind. But ironically, there's been some recent study by some investment banks uh, led by uh, Bank of America Merrill Lynch to suggest that in international markets with German bonds having a negative yield to start this process, a 30 year decline in government bond prices would actually lead to a total return of 350% because that income function becomes so powerful after time. Uh, US Treasuries would be even higher at above 400% and in Australian government bonds the, the total returns would be 600% or more. Now that's a really powerful concept if you're looking at building a retirement portfolio over time and I guess it's a great uh, you know, illustration of why you need to spend time in the market. Clearly, if central banks are cutting rates, government bonds perform really well, but government bonds generally perform pretty well through all scenarios, uh, and so we believe they play an enduring and ongoing role in portfolios to provide that defence and liquidity function as well. The outlook for interest rates in Australia and for the RBA, we believe, looks fairly benign going forward. Uh, clearly, the, the RBA have spent the last few years cutting interest rates in response to a disinflationary period. We know that inflation continues to be well below the RBA's target range, but we don't feel that uh, the RBA have a lot more to do in, in this sense. It's a very unlikely that they'll be raising interest rates anytime soon, as most global economies continue to cut interest rates. Over the course of this year alone, we've had Japan, the Eurozone, Canada, New Zealand, Australia and the Bank of England, just to name a few. So the global movement for interest rates still continues to be lower. So we feel that we're in a very benign environment and clearly bond valuations have improved tremendously and, and it actually look quite attractive in that context. We are of course often asked about the US interest rate outlook and clearly the Federal Reserve wants to lift interest rates albeit at a very slow and gradual pace. And we don't believe that'll have a particularly material impact on the Australian interest rate complex. We certainly have our own challenges that we face in Australia after a period of huge growth, 25 plus years without a recession. Uh, the debt burdens in Australia have grown tremendously versus incomes. And so Australians have become extremely interest rate sensitive. And therefore the RBA need to keep the interest rate complex low in order to make the serviceability of that debt stock uh, much easier you know, for, the, for the common man or woman on the street. The CCJCB Active Bond Fund uh, specialises in protecting people's capital. Uh, we believe that uh, permanent cap capital loss is something that people need to be very aware of, but people also need a, a return um, that's relevant to the risk that they are taking. In the current environment, there's a huge amount of volatility out in the world, macro and, ge and geopolitical type volatility. Um, we believe that uh, in, a, in an environment such as this, capital preservation is key. We are very late in the, in the economic cycle to be hiking interest rates in the US and um, in other parts, of, potentially other parts of the world. There is a, an enormous potential for, um, for a financial type calamity down the line and we believe preservation of capital is, it should be at the forefront of, of a conservative investor's mind.